，请陈教授、周教授。北京当代经济学基金会经济学奖评奖委员会，距今将二零一七年中国经济学奖授予。应该有人陪一下。邹志庄。美国普林斯顿大学名誉退休教授，陈小红，耶鲁大学经济学教授。奖励他们在计量经济学领域做出的杰出贡献。请大家一热烈掌声，祝贺周志章教授。现在有请夏理事长为陈小红教授颁奖，并合影留念。非常激动人心的时刻，在位。让我们再次以热烈掌声向他们表示祝贺。好，现在。Xiao Hong Chen, I'll be talk, discussing、um, some of her research connected to what I think of as sieve-based methods of conditional moment estimation, copula-based methods of、uh, for time series econometrics, and temporal dependence and nonlinear models. Now you know there's a bunch of jargon attached into these different titles and the like, and I would like to kind of try to indicate why I think I think these methods and these ideas are really truly important in、uh, in economic practice. Xiao Hong Chen, she developed methods for so-called that were so-called semi-parametric. Her along with others, a prominent person、uh, in the audience here, Peter Robinson, was a um has been a leader in this field,、um, and. And there's this very interesting, you know, very important piece of th this, in which you allow for some explicit structure. You allow for imposing economic structure along some dimensions, key parameters that have direct interpretations, which is often important. But flexibility along others, this combination of putting together flexibility along some dimensions and and, and spe specific structure along others. How do you take a complex environment, allow for、uh, flexibility some places, but still try to tease out and and still try to extract out the really key insights? So these contributions I view as being very complementary. They enhance our understanding of statistical complexity in different and very complementary ways. You know, I I learned about Jia Hong Chen from someone who would be really proud to be proud of you is、uh, Hal White, because、um, I asked him about some I asked him about a problem on stochastic approximation, and he said, "Oh, you should talk to Jia Hong Chen, this kid. She's brilliant, and she should see what she's doing." And then that's how I met her. I met her before I met her, just like Gregory, and、um, so. What what she was doing was、um, studying、um, learning. She was applying stochastic approximation to to models with agents inside who were trying to learn, and they were learning by doing what Milton Friedman said.、Um, in a context much more ambitious than Friedman had in mind. So、um, so that's just the beginning of.、Uh, Zhao Hong's work, but it but it had a theme of、um, that's carried through.、Um, 
and, and Lars captured this really well. Um, we're learning about stuff, but um, Xiao Hong's work, she's, she's, and, and so a lot of the stuff that Gregory taught us how to do was learning about, and, and for good reasons, learning about models that were really tightly parameterized. And there were, there were good reasons for that, which I'll come back to. And um, a theme of Zhao Hong Chen's work was, uh, are we paying a big price for, so are we paying too big a price for parameterizing uh, and how, as tightly as um, we had been doing? Um, and how would you learn about how big that price is? Because there's something that lurks behind this is, you cannot be totally general. It's like, uh, and go back to Feynman. You can't, you can't solve Feynman's problem unless you bring some prior information into it. Um, you know, a good example about this is around, around 1900 or 1910, there's some guys uh, in physics trying to build models of the electron. They're really the smartest guys around. Uh, they get nowhere because there's not enough theory about the electron to, to, uh, to tell them what to look for. And that continues on to this day. But um, so one of the themes is, is to the only thing that we can learn about, the statisticians or econometricians can learn about, is a model. It's a model that restrictions the, the data. And fundamentally, it's going to be finite dimensional. Um, or something like finite dimensional. Jia Hong has taught me this, tried to teach it to me. Um, you can't, you can't, you can't let, if you, if you let, try say, I'm gonna let the data speak by themselves and not get in their way, they're gonna tell you nothing. So the only thing you can learn about is a model. Um, the message of Jia Hong's work is a model both enables learning and it sets us up for mistakes the kind of mistakes Lars was talking about. It sets us up for approximation errors. So how do you do a, uh, what do you do in the face of that? So, um, I don't know. So Zhao Hong um, sent me off learning about information geometry, um, you know, divergence measures and things like that. So, so in terms of characterizing um, the kinds of errors you can make and how you can reduce them in a clever way as more data come in. Um, so I think, you know, Lars mentioned this. I mean, Zhao Hong's work is, tells us a lot about what we can get from big data and what we can't get. And it uh, teaches us things about how to design um, strategies for acquisition of more data um, and where that'll help us and where it's not going to be. So, um, and then Lars mentioned this, there's, um, there's, there's, there's ambitious uh, applications to um, nonlinear data reduction techniques. Um, some work with Lars. Um, and that has, she's done work on asset pricing, estimation of preferences and technology parameters um, in, in environments where she's taught us what relaxing uh, previous restrictions and parameters can bring some big insights. So I'll stop now. So there's a lot that, there's a lot that unites the work of Gregory and, and Xiao Hong. Um, and it's, it's the, I think it's the best that economics has to offer. It's, it's, um, it's a tight language in terms of stochastic processes, explicit models. There's no loose talk. Occasionally there's a conjecture. Um, it's real science about um, matching models to data. It's teaching the objects that we can learn about. And, um, and just I'll make a remark about it. It shows the benefits of, of free trade. Um, I hope from my country, because uh, you know, think how much I've learned from uh, two people that weren't originally, uh, you know, born where I was born, and somehow I got to read their work 
and then I was lucky enough to meet them. So thanks a lot. Unfortunately, I've only met uh, Professor Chow a few times over the years, but by contrast, uh, I've met Professor Zhao Hongchen countless times. In fact, for a couple of glorious years, she and I were colleagues uh, when I managed to persuade her to come to the LSE. Uh, this was too good to last, and she returned to the US where her career has certainly uh, flourished. Now, the award of the China Economics Prize to Xiao Hong uh, has nothing to do with gender balance. Certainly, she's had to work all the harder in order to uh, succeed in a male-dominated profession. I can think of nobody, male or female, who's more high-powered technically in econometrics than Xiao Hong. And this is evidenced by her work on civ estimation, copula, and other areas of non-parametric and semi-parametric econometrics. Uh, she's already a very prominent figure in econometrics, not only in terms of research, but uh, in terms of her service to the profession. And uh, <clears throat> I think my, my prediction that she'll become much more prominent as zero means squared error. So finally, let me offer my congratulations to both these distinguished scholars uh, for this prestigious award. This takes me now, it's a natural segue from Gregory's work in recruiting a brilliant Chinese economists and brilliant Chinese students to study economics in the West to one such example of a student that he recruited, namely Xiaohong Chen, who is a brilliant and highly productive scholar in mid-career. Uh, in the case of Gregory, there is a long life with many, many achievements. In the case of Xiaohong, there's a relatively short life. She's been out for maybe 20, 25 years. She's mid-career, but she also has a very impressive body of work. And in some ways, that body of work overlaps with Gregory's interest in economic dynamics. Like Gregory, she's worked on macro time series. She's worked on the econometrics of, of, uh, of learning, the econometrics of financial models, the econometrics, just dynamic economic models, but also on a broad range of econometric tools. And in some sense, Xiao Hong represents the next generation of economists. She is the very best example of a body of work. Her work is some of the very best example of what we now think of as called semi-parametric and non-parametric econometrics. When econometrics got going back in the 1930s and 40s, when Gregory was still a graduate student, undergraduate, uh, understanding linear equation systems was really a big deal, and it was important. The linear models provided the economists with some initial insights as to how the economy would, uh, would, would proceed. And so linear simultaneous equation models were the tools of the trade. But as economists get better data, and as they probe more deeply into the structure of the economy, they became aware of fundamental nonlinearities in the economy. And some, even some nonlinear phenomena where dynamics can be quite uh, dramatic, where it, there can be phase periods, transition periods, where the whole structure of the economy shifts. And uh, Gregory, of course, contributed to that. But a growing problem in the field of econometrics that came out, I think, of the application of these models in the 1980s was the concern that many of the empirical results coming out of these models were artifacts of assuming particular functional forms, making particular assumptions about distributions, and were essentially uh, maybe artifacts and maybe not to be trusted. Uh, there's still an ongoing discussion in, uh, in econometrics. Some people call it the credibility revolution. Some people uh, doubt that it's the credibility revolution is all that credible, but that's a separate issue. I think what is the case is that economists became much more aware about the importance of being careful about distributional and functional form assumptions. And so 
When Chao Hong was a graduate student, and then in her early years, she was deeply trained in the mathematical statistics that took economists to the next frontier, tools that allowed for understanding the structure of the economy, but doing it without imposing a lot of parametric or distributional structure and therefore allowing much more flexible explorations of the economy. And so Xiao Hong has been a pioneer in applying and developing and extending what is called non-parametric or semi-parametric econometrics. Understanding how to build non-parametric and semi-parametric models that are more robust, understanding how to test them, understanding how to apply them and extend them to time series settings with high degrees of non uh, non-linearity and the processes generating the stochastic processes of the economy. And so Xiao Hong's work, which continues unabated to this moment, has led to a series of very influential papers that influence the discussion of the, uh, in economic econometrics today. So for example, if you go through her work on non-parametric instrumental variables and moment conditions, she has done some fundamental pioneering work. Measurement error, which used to be the province only of linear models, has now, in the hands of Xiao Hong and some of her co-authors, become a major subject for investigation in nonlinear settings. Empirically, nonlinear measurement error is found to be important when validation and reliability studies are conducted. But until Xiao Hong came along and some of her co-workers and peers, it was not possible to really consider nonlinear measurement error. But Xia Hong's work has made that possible. And so, in a series of studies, not only measurement error, but understanding the sensitivity of estimators, understanding how to pool data from different sources in models that are highly nonlinear and semi parametric and non parametric, studying models of finance, volatility, understanding how financial markets operate looking at models of learning, which are essential to the macroeconomy. When Gregory was writing, models of adaptive expectations were still quite current. Uh, Gregory also worked on rational expectation models. But Xiao Hong has gone a little further, taking those rational expectations models, challenging them at times, considering them in nonlinear settings, and extending the work in a variety of fields, not just in, in finance and macroeconomics, but also with application in microeconomics to the theory of the firm and to understanding consumer behavior. So some of her work, for example, in finance is equally relevant to understanding habit formation in macro finance models as it is in habit formation in micro models of addiction, for example, or micro models of the formation of, uh, of, uh, of character and of, and of skills and of beliefs. So Xiao Hong's work has kind of probed very deeply, but she's probed deeply, widely, and created a series of, a toolbox, a whole series of tools that economists, including this economist, use. I mean, both of your recipients have, have used, have created tools that I've used and many other economists have used. But in particular, Xiao Hong now is mid-career and developing a very exciting body of work in, in a number of fields. And in that sense, I think that Maybe the prize that you're giving today might be given again in 20, 30 years when Xiao Hong is a more senior scholar than she is now. She's still quite young, still quite productive, and still quite active. I hope that you'll consider maybe giving her a second prize because I'm confident that in the next 20 or 30 years we'll see a period of productivity that will equal or maybe even excel what Xiao Hong has done. I'm honored to be asked to provide this congratulations for Xiaohang Chen for this award. I'm thrilled for her and I'm thrilled for the foundation that they've made this award. Uh, it's a wonderful thing and I'm grateful to offer my congratulations. I met Xiaohang in uh, an interview before her first position as an economist. Uh, and at the time she was doing interesting work on learning. Uh, which is terrific, and over time has worked, her work has gotten better and better. And it's just been wonderful to, to participate in and, and 
continue to learn from, from her as her work has uh, improved and become so important in econometrics. Her early work, her early work on learning was novel and important. She developed and showed how to estimate behavioral models or habit formation and persistence in fine art and made a wonderful contribution there. She's made interesting contributions to studying the dependence over time and the relationship among different dependent variables. Uh, among the things that she's done, her work on non-parametric instrumental variable estimation is so important and so helpful. She developed uh, results on convergence rates, on asymptotic distribution theory, and had the inference for these models that has taken the, those results from the early identification and consistency results to a, just a wonderful new level, and really she's the world expert in the area of non parametric instrumental variables. That is so important in economics because uh, of its, uh, the ability it provides to estimate structural models. And she continues to do interesting uh, work. Um, a wonderful thread that runs through her work is, is the work on series estimation and on sieve estimation, uh, which uh, provides a wonderful way to estimate lots of different economic models. And she has really developed a very uh, wonderful way that has helped, uh, helped us uh, make serious progress on a lot of difficult problems. Um, I am, let's see, she, she, it's been wonderful to work with her. Uh, being a co-author, I, I always learn things and in fact every time I talk with her I'm grateful for the things that she shares because I, I learn new ways of thinking about things and, uh, and also very rigorous ways of thinking about things which is very helpful. Uh, wonderful to visit the Coles Foundation last year several times and I'm grateful for hospitality, thankful for her friendship. Uh, so Good to talk with her and look forward to, you know, bright future for her. I uh, look forward to what's coming next from Xiaohong Chen. I want to commend the foundation for the wonderful choice of a, an economist to be awarded the, the best economist in China award. Uh, I couldn't think of a, a better person to give that to than Xiaohong Chen. Uh, she just does terrific work, and congratulations to her, congratulations to Xiao Hong for this award, and to the Foundation as well for this award. We move to Xiao Hong. Xiao Hong is largely responsible for developing the right sample theory for estimation and inference on semi non parametric models using the method of penalized sieves. She likes to call a model semi non parametric if it contains both finite dimensional and infinite dimensional parameters of interest. These methods have become popular in theoretical and applied work in economics, partly because they facilitate a closer match of statistical models with economic foundations, partly because of the increasing feasibility of analyzing large data sets, partly because the generality of the approach in allowing to integrate tightly specified parametric aspects with flexible functional components. But also importantly, because we have her econometric theory to guide us. Xiao Hong, what can I say? We've been uh, friends and co-authors, and we've worked together now over some 20 years, and I've learned so much from you, and uh, it's been a real pleasure to work with you. I should say that Xiao Hong, you've, um, you've really pushed the boundaries of econometrics forward in very important ways, exploring uh, new semi-parametric estimators and uh, non-linear measurement error and many aspects of modern econometrics, perhaps defining in a way where the frontier is 
Bob Munn and Econometrics. Uh, so we're all grateful to you, and we know you're going to continue with this uh, splendid, splendid work. So congratulations to both of you, to Gregory Chow and to Xiaohong Chen, both influential and uh, so important to me, actually, in different ways over my uh, early and my recent career. So congratulations to you both and enjoy the prize.